What's up, guys? Jeff here for Mad Hatter's Reef, and today we're going to continue our little mini-series on Pico Reef Tanks. Now, we shared our podcast where we talked with Felicia, who is the lady behind this tank that you see right now, and she has been a innovator when it comes to Pico Reef Tanks and keeping some of the most amazing looking micro reef tanks last week we talked about the top 10 critters that you can have in a pico reef tank and that was fish and invertebrates and this week we're going to be taking a look at corals now before we jump into all of that it's very important to kind of talk about some of the constraints that you face when you are dealing with a pico reef tank where it is such a small body of water things happen very rapidly in that aquarium so you are up against a lot when you are talking about maintaining a Pico reef tank. Now, when you're talking about the selection of the type of corals that you're putting into a Pico reef tank, you need to be very informed on that type of coral, its growth pattern, how big it gets, if it can be fragged, whether it can be placed next to other different types of corals. All these different things are very important. But probably the most important thing when you're talking about corals and pico reef tanks is how hardy that coral is because it's a small vessel things can change rapidly inside that tank so that coral needs to be able to adjust with it and that coral's ability to withstand the fluctuations within a pico reef tank is going to dictate whether or not it is a good candidate for that size reef tank now when you're talking pico reef tanks you're typically talking a three gallon or less aquarium so things can happen fast and that's why we're going to take a look at the top 10 candidates for a pico reef tank in today's top 10 coming in at number 10 on our top 10 pico reef tank corals is the green star polyp now this is a coral that is loved and hated and for those of the folks out there that love this coral they love the looks they think it's easy to keep and they enjoy the way it looks in a reef tank setting. Now, the folks out there that hate the Green Star polyps, they hate it because it grows everywhere. It grows on all surfaces, and it can become a pain in the butt. And that is because it is so easy to grow this coral, and that's what makes it a good candidate for a Pico reef tank, is that it's forgiving. It's one of the easiest corals to keep, and it prefers a dirty tank. Now, when I say dirty tank, I'm not talking... 50 parts per million on your nitrates it is a coral that's a little bit more forgiving than most so that is what makes it such a great candidate for a pico reef tank now if you're going to keep green star polyps is one thing that you need to take into consideration is that you're probably going to need to frag this coral a lot and often now as far as for some hobbyists that may be more than what they're willing to deal with and for those that are getting into the hobby and are interested in fragging this isn't a bad coral to start with you literally can just cut off chunks or um, use a pair of scissors or a scalpel or a, just a straight razor blade and cut off pieces of this guy and attach it to a plug and you have a frag that you can trade with other hobbyists or you can bring to your local fish store and trade with them maybe get a store credit which is a pretty good deal when it comes to saving money on additional equipment and supplies for your reef tank Coming in at number nine on our top 10 Pico reef tank corals is the candy cane coral. Now, unlike green star polyps, which are a soft coral, the candy cane coral is a LPS coral, which stands for large polyp stony. Now, as far as large polyp stonies go, most often they're pretty forgiving for fluctuations in water chemistry and temperature and lighting scenarios which are all ideal characteristics of a coral that you're looking to put into a Pico reef tank. The candy cane coral is relatively easy to frag, which also makes it a great candidate for smaller tanks. It's not something that is going to be a pain in the butt. If it starts getting a little too big for its britches, you can just take it out, snip off a couple of branches, which usually form into these heads that you see in this picture here. And it is just a really interesting coral, very forgiving, and also a fast grower, which is going to help promote the fragging side of the hobby. So if you get started with candy cane corals, uh, you're probably going to need to frag them in a couple of months. But it's fun to see those heads split and grow and just this beautiful coral continue to thrive, even in a small setting. So 
Check them out, the Candy Cane Coral. It's not going to break the bank, and it's a very forgiving coral. So, so far we've had Green Star Polos, which are going to close up at night and then open up when the lights turn on. Your Candy Cane Corals don't do a whole lot. Uh, there's a little bit of feeding reactiveness that they do have, so at night you may see them open up and their tentacles extend out. And as far as movement with both these corals, it's not a whole lot of movement. But that's going to change with number eight. So coming in at number eight on our top ten, Pico Reef Tank Corals is the Gania Pora. Now as far as movement is concerned, this is definitely the coral to consider. Especially if you're looking for a coral that's going to create some type of movement within your Pico Reef Tank. Now this is a LPS coral and probably offers some of the most stunning colorations when it comes to the LPS coral game. They are definitely a coral that has a bad rap and over the years have been considered hard to keep. And that is slowly changing because a lot of the species that are floating around within the aquaculture scene right now are much hardier than what we have seen in the past and are doing very well for a number of years. And a lot of folks have started turning their attention to this coral because it is so beautiful and can offer a lot of different colors and movement to a reef tank and that's what a lot of folks are looking for. In comparison to the previous corals that we've talked about on this list, the Ganyapora is a relatively slow growing coral which makes them a excellent candidate for a small tank setting. So if you're looking for a challenge with your Pico reef tank, check out the Ganyapora. Coming in at number seven on our top 10 Pico reef tank corals is the Gagornian. Now the Gagornian has a lot of information that goes along with this coral and it's important to make sure you do your research before you pick one up. They are incredibly beautiful and I actually did not get into this coral until I'd say about a year ago. I'd never kept them. And the reason why I just stayed away from them is because I never really did any research on them. Didn't care to dive into it. I did have an understanding of them as that some of them were hard to keep, some of them not so hard to keep, but never really understood what the differences between the two are. And that difference between these two types of Gagornian is, is one that is photosynthetic and the other one is not and that one that is not photosynthetic or non-photosynthetic needs some type of food source to stay alive so i think in a pico reef tank it would be rather interesting to see a gagornian in that setting they are considered a soft coral that grows rather slow and if you go with the photosynthetic variety i think that it would be a recipe for a very interesting pico reef tank and that's why this guy landed on the list at number seven coming in at number six on our top 10 pico reef tank corals is the good old fashioned zoanthid now these guys can grow in just about every situation some of them are more fast than others as far as growth rate is concerned but they offer a tremendous amount of coloration and sizes when it comes to this species of coral now anytime that you're talking about zoanthids i think that it's very important to stress the importance of understanding paleotoxins and this guy is loaded with them actually no it's not fair to say that some of them have paleotoxins others don't and anytime that you're handling a zoanthid it's just better to use safety glasses have some type of glove on because you don't want this stuff to enter into your bloodstream it's also important to mention that anytime that you are fragging zoanthids you need those items the safety glasses the gloves but you also need to make sure that there's no kids around or pets around during that fragging time because if something were to fall on the floor or they were to come in contact with paleotoxin it is enough to kill a small being and definitely put a full-grown man in the hospital so anytime that you are handling those zoanthids make sure you're taking those cautions but outside of that Zoanthids are probably some of the most resilient corals out there and they offer a tremendous amount of coloration and different morphs and different growth sizes. There's also different rates of growth involved with this coral, but they can do well in just about any setting. Now, as far as me personally and what I would put in my Pico Reef Tank, I would definitely be chasing those high-end zoanthids. I'd want that zoanthid that costs a couple hundred bucks per frag in that tank and i think the reason why i'd want to do that 
is where it's such a small tank, it's going to be showcased. It's something that you're going to see all the time. It's not going to be like a huge tank where you put it in there, and unless it's an absolute monstrous colony, it doesn't really stand out. Where you have that smaller tank, spend a little extra, get those high-end zoanthids, and you'll be a lot happier for it. Hey, if you are new to the Mad Hatter's Reef channel and this is your first time joining us and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, do so now because we put videos like this together each and every week. So if you love everything Reef Tank related, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. Now back to our top 10 and coming in at number 5 on our top 10 Pico Reef Tank Corals is the Acan Coral. Now, this guy is a good candidate for a Pico Reef Tank because it's a little bit more forgiving when it comes to the water chemistry side of things and has a very slow growth pattern. With those two things aside, it has some of the absolute best coloration in corals available to us in the hobby today. They're absolutely stunning. They're one of my probably most favorite coral that are out there and definitely a interesting thing to add to a Pico reef tank because it almost can mislead you to the size of a tank. Now, earlier in the video, we actually showed a picture that had a couple of a cans in that tank. And if you jump back to that and take a look at it, it almost makes the tank look much bigger than it actually is. Coming in at number four in our top 10 Pico reef tank corals is the Duncan coral now this is a coral that i actually had a opportunity to get very early in the hobby for absolutely nothing the guy was just going to give it to me and i said no thank you i don't know what it was about this coral but it wasn't something that i was very much interested in i don't know if it was my mushroom stage that i was going through or zoanthid stage that i was going through at that point in time but didn't really have much of an interest in this lps coral the one thing that i have found over the years and my position on them has changed a lot is this is a indicator coral it's going to tell you how well your tank is doing so if you have some duncans in your tank and they're a little bit closed up and not fully extended there's probably something going on so it's going to be important to take out that test kit and test your water and see what's going on because this coral is very hardy it's very forgiving but it is going to let you know if something's wrong and that's why it is number four on our top 10. Coming in at number three on our top 10 Pico Reef Tank Corals is the Recordia. Absolutely some of the most colorful, soft corals out there in the hobby today. And I feel like they're a little forgotten. They're a coral that hasn't been chased for a while. And I feel like that's probably going to come back around at some point. And in a Pico Reef Tank setting... This is a great coral to get into. Uh, it offers a lot of different coloration and is going to definitely pop in your tank and be a coral that is going to offer a lot of visual appeal. Now, visuals are important in a reef tank. That's why we keep the corals that we keep. But it is an incredibly hardy coral and is going to withstand a lot of fluctuations within your tank. So that's what makes it a great candidate for a Pico reef tank. Coming in at number two on our top 10 Pico reef tank corals is the Sephastria coral. Now, this coral is a coral that does not prefer very bright light. It is a good fill in the darkness coral and do a lot better in dimly lit tanks as opposed to a very bright spotlight that could potentially be over the tank. So when you are talking a Pico reef tank, obviously if you have a very strong light on a small tank, this is probably not the coral for you. But in other situations where you have that kind of elegant dimly lit tank this is definitely a coral that is going to thrive in those situations it is technically a sps coral that acts very similar to a encrusting bonipora so it's going to grow and cover the rock work and as long as that tank is dimly lit it's going to thrive very well and has some amazing colorations especially if you have a light that is high in the calvin degree rating and coming in at number one on our top 10 Pico Reef Tank Corals is the Button Scully. Now, these guys are relatively new to the hobby, 
and offers some absolutely stunning coral coloration. The one thing that's important to mention about this coral is it's going to require feeding to get the best coloration out of it and also keep the coral healthy. So it's important to mention that when you are feeding in a Pico reef tank that it's probably not best to go with the powders. You're gonna be a lot better off and get better results with the pellets. You're gonna be able to target feed your corals and it's definitely a coral that is going to benefit from feeding. So I would recommend feeding with pellets and making sure that there isn't any wasted food left in the tank whatsoever. Now, as far as scolies go, they are incredibly easy to keep. And the only thing that really holds a lot of folks back from them is they do have a substantial price tag. A coral such as the one that you see here on the screen could be as big as a silver dollar, which would be the high end on button scolies, but could have a price tag of 400 plus dollars. Now, the reason that this coral is so expensive is that it's a coral that is not aquacultured. It is actually collected from the wild reefs. And quite often when you're talking, taking a coral from a wild reef, packaging it up, shipping it off, and then by the time it gets to the wholesaler and to the local store, there is quite a bit of legwork that has gone into bringing that coral into the States, and that's why they cost as much as they do. All that aside, they are some of the most beautiful corals that are available to hobbyists. They do have that high price tag, but they are very forgiving and small form factor, and that's why they come in at number one on our top 10 Pico Reef Tank Corals. All right, folks, that's going to do it for today's video. I want to thank you for joining me. Thank you for the support, the likes, and the comments, and I will see you next week right here with a brand new video, but don't be sad because there are plenty of Mad Hatter Reef videos to go around. Stay salty.